Well, hello everyone. It's David Carr. Once again, I have another editing video for you. This is just, this is how I edit. This is the way I do it. This is my process, and uh, hopefully, this is inspiring to you. Uh, again, thank you for the comments, and uh, please leave comments. Please leave reviews. Tell me what I'm doing right. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Um, I'm open, but uh, I really uh, I really enjoy doing this, and hopefully, it's helpful to you. So let's uh, take a look at this photo. Okay, so this is a photograph that I shot in Tanzania back in August of 2019. And uh, this is one that I kind of just brushed past as, as I was looking at all of my photos, just trying to decide which ones I was going to edit and which ones I was going to throw away. And this is one that kind of ended up in the throwaway pile um, because it's kind of dull. Um, you know, we've got a giraffe, that's nice, but I've got other giraffe photos that I thought were better. But you know, as I was looking at this photo again, I just thought to myself, there might actually be something here. Sometimes you just have to look at the shapes that you're dealing with and the overall aesthetic of the photo um, and, and ask yourself, can it work? Now, number one, I've got sharpness going for me. It is a sharp photo and um, it's composed not terribly. Uh, I didn't cut off part of the tree or anything over here. And uh, I've left myself plenty of foreground and plenty of sky to work with. Um, so it's it's lackluster right now, but it's going to be, I think it's, I think there's something we can do with it. So let's dive right in. Uh, the first thing I want to do, um, I, you know, I could go to my exposure and bring that up. And, and actually that does help quite a bit. Um, I'm going to bring my shadows up uh, a, a decent amount. In fact, I'm going to bring the exposure down and just see what happens if I only bring the shadows up because I like the sky. You know, I like the detail in the sky. You can see the, the shapes of the clouds. And if I bring the exposure up, we start to lose some of that. Um, so we'll just bring the shadows up and I'm gonna go all the way to like 75. Now, it's a little too washed out at this point, uh, in my opinion, but, but you know, the first thing I can do after this is, uh, you know, go down to highlights or up to highlights, I should say. And um, we'll pull those back quite a bit. Um, let's say maybe right there bring these shadows up even more. I just want to see if I can get a lot of detail out of this uh, particular photo here. Um, I, I like where this is landing. Uh, you know, it's still washed out. And sometimes you have to, to know when you're watching me edit this, you might be thinking, what is he doing to this photograph? But trust me, I, I have a vision. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to bring the black level down to, let's see. see, see what that does. That adds contrast without using the contrast slider. A lot of times this is too much for me. It makes it look too processed. And uh, granted, this photo will look processed. It already does kind of look processed, but that's not always a bad thing. It's just how you do it, what you, what you do with it. So let's go to, let's go to minus 47 here. To me, that's looking pretty good. Let's crop it a little bit. I'm going to hit the R key. We're going to crop it. We're also going to straighten the horizon it's it's a little bit slanted upward and i kind of want to i want to straighten that out a little bit like this uh let's see how that looks i don't think that's better maybe a little more and then uh when i did that it brought my left edge a little too close to these tips of these tree branches so i'm going to get as much as i can out of this this area over here and um I've got my padlock turned off so I can freeform the crop here a little bit. But you know what? Actually, looking at this, the, the real action is right in here. And I'm wondering if a 16 by 9 aspect ratio would, would be helpful. Let's just click on that. Ah, getting somewhere nice. Great. I'm going to click the R key again just to get out of my crop tool and see how it's looking. I like it. Um, I feel like I still have a little too much sky here. I don't need all this sky. Um, and probably have a little too much information over here, so let's let's pull that in a little bit. Um, again, we're now we're constrained to a 16 by 9 crop, and uh, I'm going to bring this in and get rid of these trees here, even just uh, from the side, and see if I can make something work within this frame, which I think I think is going to work pretty nicely. Let me bring this up a little bit, and uh, let's let's click the R key and see how that looks now. Oh, nice! It's looking good. Maybe still a hint too much here. I don't know that I need that much sky. I'm just gonna bring this uh, back up. That looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna come down just a touch more. Maybe just a little more. Great, okay, now I'm gonna click the L key twice and that's gonna bring up this loop view with the black surrounding and, and that way you can kind of see it uh, as a presentation, sort of as like if, the, if it was hanging on the wall like this, how would that look? And I actually like this. Uh, this crop and um, this aspect ratio. 
And uh, so far, I'm, I'm liking the edit. Uh, I think I think we're getting to a good place. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, I want to see what happens if I raise my texture. Now, there's already quite a bit of texture in this photo, but let's let's just bring it up and see if that if we want to add any more to it. Um, it's subtle, but uh, you know, it definitely makes a difference. I, I'm just going to do a hint at plus, uh, let's say plus 18 or something. Um, and uh, now. I don't recommend a heavy vignette, but sometimes I like to see what a little bit of, uh, of a vignette would do. So bringing that down a little bit, you can see the kind of the, the outer areas get a little darker. Um, to me, that brings you a little more into the center of the photo, but I'm only going to go to like minus five on that. Again, I'm going to click the L key twice, see how we're looking. That looks pretty good to me. I'm, I'm, I'm liking this. Um, and then I'm going to hit the backslash key, and that's going to show me a before and after of my photo. Okay. Now, it doesn't show you the before crop. It will only show you the before uh, of all your exposure and tonality and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, there's before, there's after. We've, we've definitely improved upon this photo. Um, it's, it's done something nice to it. So, let's see. Looking at local area adjustments, I'm going to see what happens if I can add a little more texture to this grass. I don't necessarily need it, but I just want to see, you know, sometimes you just want to experiment. What would it look like if we did this? And, you know, the great thing about editing is you can always go back and undo it. You don't have to stay committed to anything. So, I've got my texture slider. It's, it's cranked there at, at 87, but we're just going to go in here and paint. I'm shrink my brush down. Ah, oh, that's looking nice on the grass. And I'm not going to get super scientific about it. It's just a little more of like um, some just some brush strokes. Um, adding that in. I like that. I think that looks really nice. Uh, putting some more texture in there. I kind of went over a little bit on the giraffe. Click the O key and it will show you where you've painted. So there's some areas here I missed. And again, I'm not going to get super scientific. I'm not going to get in there and like fine tune every little element here. But just, you know, kind of paint it in. Uh, you got to think like a painter in these situations. You don't want to think like a like a mechanic where everything's got to be exactly spot on perfect. You want to you want to use a little bit of artistic um, uh, you know sensibility and nuance to to get this right. I did paint over the draft there. I don't love that, so I'm gonna uh, hold down my Option key and that's gonna put me in an eraser mode. And let me just uh, increase the size there. And if you're wondering how I do that, I use a mouse with a scroll wheel. I'm actually using an Apple uh, Magic Mouse, and so you can scroll with your with your finger, and it will create uh, a larger or smaller brush uh, right there on the mouse. So it's kind of nice. It's just one tool here that I can do all that with. And uh, okay, let's uh, click the O key, get out of that uh, mask mode where we could see where we were editing. Um, you know, I think I would like to brighten the giraffe up a little bit. This is going to get a little more tedious. Uh, I'm going to zoom in and the way I zoom in, I'm actually using a trackpad and a mouse. So I've got a trackpad on the left that I zoom with and I use the mouse to, uh, to, to move around. Now, when you are in a brush, an adjustment brush or a clone or healing stamp tool, you cannot just, um, click and drag. You have to hold the space bar down to click and drag. Um, you can get out of the tool, but if you want to stay in that tool, you're going to have to hold that space bar down. Then you can click and drag around your photo, but kind of get where you want to be. And uh, we're just going to paint in some, uh, some, some brightness onto the giraffe here. So let's go up to a new tool and we're going to go to dodge or lighten. And we're going to just start lightening up Mr. Giraffe here, or Mrs. Giraffe. Um, again, I'm going to turn on the mask here, and so I can see exactly where I'm painting. Because sometimes you'll you'll miss a spot, or you'll go over, and and you'll paint onto something you didn't mean to paint onto. Again, I'm not going to get really really meticulous, but definitely want to get more meticulous than I did with the grass, um, because this is just one, uh, you know, iconic. Uh, element of the photo and you really want to make sure that if you're going to brighten it up you want to you want to brighten it up fairly evenly um I have to shrink my brush down as i go and um, a great trick let's say you want to go from here down to here you can click here 
go all the way down to here, hold your shift key and click again, and it will just paint. And that's a really quick way to fill in some of these straighter areas. I'm going to go down here, hold my shift key, go up here, hold my shift key, and you can kind of work your way around uh, the object that you are, or that you're painting on. So let's do that again here, shift, and we'll go here, shift. And it's kind of like connecting the dots here. You know, I got a little bit there. Um, maybe I'll erase that. I'm going to hold my option key again. And um, the only reason I want to do that is I don't want to, I don't want to create any kind of like white fringe around or, or lighter fringe, I should say, around the giraffe. I want it to look pretty realistic and believable. Um, but, you know, sometimes you have to wait till it's done and then kind of take a look at it and see what's really standing out. Um, you just don't want to get, you don't want to get like this where you're just doing this, because if you do this, it's going to, then it's going to, that's not going to look good at all. So I'm going to undo that by clicking command Z and, uh, let's go up here. All right. Painting this in My brush size is a little large for this, you know, and a lot of times if you go around your edges first, then you can create a larger brush and just kind of fill in the middle. Um, and you know, the good thing as you've seen me do is if I accidentally go like that, it's an easy fix. I can either undo it. Well, but that un undid all the <laughs> painting that I just did. So let me, uh, let me click shift command Z and bring it back. And then, so to get rid of this now, I'm going to hold down the option key again, just to remind you that that's, that's how you can erase that little area there. Okay. Inc increase that brush size now. Okay. And, uh, to get in on this tail, I'm going to zoom in even more using my trackpad. Let me, uh, create a smaller brush and I'm going to use that shift trick again. It's very helpful for stuff like this. Um, just so we can get some precision here. It also saves you time from having to drag and paint and drag and paint. You can, you know, you just, if you've got a straight line, or a semi straight line, it, it just, it's so much nicer. Watch this, I can go all the way up here and it paints that in. It went over a little bit there, but I, I don't think that's gonna show up. Um, I will say when I first started in photography, I, I was way more haphazard with this and I would just sort of paint over the whole thing, kind of just one big stroke. And I learned that the more detailed I get, usually the better you know, the results are, um, you have to learn where the balance is. Cause there are times when, when it's just not going to yield a better result. Like I don't need to get in here and, and really lighten all these little areas up here. That's, that would be incredibly tedious and just almost impossible in Lightroom to really do justice to that. Let's get up here on his ears though. Just might as well brighten everything while we're here painting all that in. I know this is boring to watch, but just, you got to see that the process, this is kind of the tedious process, but it's, it's going to be worth it because this giraffe is the, it really is the main feature of this photograph. And so I want to make sure that, uh, it looks as it should. All right, let's zoom back out. I'm actually going to go up to the, the fit button up here. Click that fits it right there. Let me click uh, O it's going to get that red mask away. And, uh, we've brightened up the giraffe. Let me click uh, K and that will get us out of the adjustment brush. All right, great. The giraffe is brighter now. Um, the tree looks good. I think it's in good shape. One thing I'm going to do, I'm going to click the K key again, click on that adjustment. And I just want to see what happens if I bring down that brightness a little bit. You don't want to get it too bright. It looks, you know, dumb. It doesn't look real. Um, this, you know, this is where we started. So then you can kind of ride that slider a little bit and see where does it start to look the most natural? Where does it look too much? Where does it look too little? I think we were at 25, um, 0.25. I'm going to come down just a smidge, maybe to 20. Let's just go, or, you know, right in here somewhere. Uh, yeah, 20. Okay. Let's leave it there. All right. The next thing is going to require some Photoshop because I want to get rid of a lot of these little areas, these little bushes and dark spots. Now I realize these were really there. This is part of what you would see if you were there, but to me, they're not, they're not helping the overall photo and I like to remove them. So to get into Photoshop, we're going to click command E. Okay. And here we are in Photoshop now ready to do some of the, uh, 
spot removal, the uh, spot healing brush, all of that kind of stuff. The first thing we do when we get into Photoshop, let's click Command J. That creates a new layer. That way we can save this background layer in case we mess anything up, we, we, we don't mess up the whole thing. Uh, we've always got this backup, but we're gonna affect layer one here, which is the background layer. I'm gonna go up to my spot healing brush tool right here. Um, you can click on it there, or you can just click the letter J, which will either bring that tool up or it'll bring up the healing brush or it will bring up the patch tool. You have to go up and decide which one you want. Um, I am usually using the spot healing brush tool. So usually when I click J, it's defaulting to that because that's where I've left off. Um, okay, there's my brush. That's not a bad size. We're gonna click on all of these little spots. There's one on the horizon. Click on that, it goes away. Uh, maybe it got it, let me, let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, I'm not gonna get super picky about a lot of these, but uh, I want to just just get out a few of these these distractions. Um, that's a large brush now for what I'm doing. Let me shrink that down. And to increase and to uh, shrink the, the, the brush size, you use your bracket keys. So the right bracket key uh, will increase it. The left bracket key will shrink it down. And you know, it's a good idea. You don't want to paint over something like this using the big, the biggest one. Now, of course that did a good job, but typically you don't want to, uh, use too big of a brush over your, um, over your fine tuning little, uh, areas. So let's just clean some of that up. Um, also seeing some branches hanging down here that, um, you know, I think it would look better without them. So I'm just going to paint over this branch here and I'll paint over this one and it's a little bit sloppy um, but uh, usually it works well left a couple little things behind you just go back and hit those again and just kind of step back and look at it and make sure everything looks the way it should maybe I'll get rid of this little curved one here you want everything to have sort of an artistic look even though this is what the tree really looked like I mean you know there's certain elements that if I can tweak them I will um, I'll, I'll just kind of clean things up and make it look a little more uh, pleasing. So that looks pretty good to me on the tree branches. Uh, we've got a little bit right here in this area. We've got a little, uh, this kind of brown branch that I didn't love so much, but, uh, I'm not going to nitpick the tree too much. I think it looks good. Let me zoom back out. Um, and then we'll go over here and we'll make a few adjustments, uh, on this side. I'm just going to get rid of this, this bush. Again, it, it's not that it's just a make it or break it thing with these things, but I just feel like the photo looks stronger when you get rid of these little distractions. There's one on the edge. Always look at your edges. Um, really look at your edges. Work your way in from them because they can really draw the eye away from the center. Even if you don't realize that that's happening, it can happen. You, you know, and, and so you just want to make sure that there's nothing along your edges that is too contrasty or just too out of place. Um, you want those edges to be clean and um, at least free of most of the distractions. Okay, that's looking pretty good. We'll get rid of that. You can see I'm just kind of being liberal about how I uh, go through and, and remove some of these things. But that looks pretty good to me overall. And I'm not going to get rid of uh, these trees and all of this. I don't need to. It, it looks fine. Um, if there was a tree that was coming up like and intersecting with the giraffe, I think that would be a problem. And so I would, I would probably try to do something about it. But thankfully when I shot this, and this was just a happy accident, um, his neck is, you know, free and clear of any kind of other distractions around it. So to me, that looks, um, that looks pretty good. So we're going to go back into Lightroom now by clicking command S. And, uh, when you go back into Lightroom, you, you, you have to go back and open Lightroom back up or, or get back to the Lightroom window. It's still saving over here, saving 99%. And now it's finished. So when we go to Lightroom, there it is. That's the photo back from Photoshop. All the stuff I did in Photoshop, you know, removing these branches and all these distractions, they've, they're all, um, you know, this is how it was. One thing I'm seeing now is up here, this cloud is a little dark to me. So I'm going to click K and that my dodge tool was already already you know is ready to go so let's increase the size of that and just paint over and just brighten that cloud up a little bit i just think it's better and i'm actually going to just hit my slider and go up a little brighter with it you don't want to get too much with it obviously it'll start looking uh painted but you want it to just be the the right amount um and uh 
learning what the right amount is, yeah, well, that's just, uh, that just takes time and it takes practice and you have to learn for yourself and, and figure out what you like the most. Um, one thing I could have done in Photoshop is I could have added a little bit, um, I could have added a little bit more of the, of the photo over to the side here. Um, you, you can actually go in and, and literally add more of what's right here to the left. And that would have brought these uh, tips of these tree branches a little further away from the border. But for now, I'm going to leave that alone and just look at the photo like this. I really like the way it looks. Um, let me see. Sometimes after I'm finished with a Photoshop edit, I will work with my texture and my clarity a little more, but ironically, I'll go back a little bit and see if it does anything. So let's, let's pull this back a little bit and see what it does. It kind of like gives the grass a little more of like a smooth feel to it. You still see the texture, but it gets rid of some of that, uh, that over sharpened look. So I'm going to pull that back to like minus 17. And then, uh, let's see, I I'm still feeling like it's dark in the middle of the tree here. So I wonder if I pull the shadows up a little bit more. Ah, well, maybe that's too much, but I like that. Okay. Maybe plus 21, you know, going back down to zero is these are very subtle adjustments, but they all add up to make for a better photograph. Okay. So I'm, I'm looking at this. I, I think it looks great. I'm, I'm really happy with it. Uh, let me click the L key twice and get back to my loop view and see if there's anything else that I want to do to this photo. Now, the only thing I'm seeing now is just this little bit of cloud here stands out to me. Um, it may not bother you, but I feel like it could be better if it was, if it was sort of dealt with. So clicking L again, I'm going to go to my clone stamp tool and my healing brush tool. I'm actually going to use a healing brush here increase the size. I'm going to paint over this cloud and I'm going to click the letter H and it will hide this box so I can just see the edit. It's not bad, but you can see repetitive uh, material here and here. There's information that's kind of repeated. Um, so what I'll do, let me click H again. I'm going to drag around and see if there's another spot where that starts to look a little more natural and where you don't see such a repetition. Um, Click H again, not bad, a little more repetition there, but what I can do is just paint these two spots and gets rid of those. To me, that looks pretty amazing. I think this part here is repeated here, so we could kind of go like that, uh, but now it grabbed something else. Let me undo that and um, make a larger brush, go like this. This is where you can start to really, really get um, too detailed, too nitpicky. Let me click H, see where that dragged from, ah, from right there. But I will warn you, when you mess with clouds, it can be sort of, um, you can start to shoot yourself in the foot. You can start to make things look really unnatural, but to me that, that worked. Okay, I'll get out of my clone stamp tool now, uh, healing brush tool, I should say. And um, I will, uh, let's see, I'm gonna pull the blues down just a touch and see if that does much to the sky. You can see what it really does. It brings out more of the blue. Now don't get crazy with it. It'll start looking really fake. Um, in a way it's cool, but in a way it's not cool. So just be sparing with things like that. Um, pull the blacks back down a little bit. Okay, clicking L twice again. I really love where this one landed. Uh, I think I'm gonna sign off on that because you can look at the before and after and really see how far this thing came. So thank you guys. I hope that was helpful. A um, little bit shorter video for you today. Um, but uh, you know, this, some, some photos take longer, some take uh, very little time. Some, you know, it's funny because this photo actually was not that great coming out of camera, um, but I feel like we were able to, to take it to a good place. And that's what it's all about. And so hopefully that inspires you, encourages you that you can do that with your photos, even the ones that don't look so great. If the information is there to make it great, then hang on to it. You might be able to do something with it. And uh, that's what this is all about. Okay, thank you very much. I'll be back next week with another editing video.